Good evening. Welcome to Westside Baptist Church this beautiful Good Friday. Um, we're going to gather together and we're going to start out and sing singing praises. Uh, if you would, please stand. We'll sing hymn number 139. We'll sing verses 1 and 4 of 139 at the cross. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for sinners such as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw go to the Heavenly Father in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight with thankful hearts. You're such a good and a loving God that you sent your only begotten Son into this world to die on the cross to pay for our sins. Our heart's desire tonight, Father, is that you would enable us by your word through the Holy Spirit to go up Calvary's mountain one more time and witness afresh the great price that was paid for our souls. We could never repay you, Father, no matter how we tried. But Father, we can certainly remember it, and we can certainly appreciate it. And Lord, tonight we thank you for everyone that's here. We pray your blessings upon each and every family. And may we leave this service, Father, remembering uh, the price that was paid, as well as the glorious uh, resurrection of Christ on uh, Sunday. Father, let us go out today rejoicing in the fact that we know Jesus and knowing that he's coming back soon. We pray for all this in Jesus' mighty name, and everybody that loves him said together. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. So we turn to hymn number 141, The Old Rugged Cross. 141. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The suffering and shame and I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophy
In the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, such a wonderful beauty I see. For twas on that old cross, Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last turn uh, over to hymn 149 we'll sing blessed redeemer 149 up calvary's mountain one dreadful morn walk christ my savior weary Calvary's tree. 
One more song. If you would please stand as we sing hymn number 366 before the pastor comes, and we'll sing Let Us Break Bread Together. 366. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break. together on our knees. Let us drink the cup together your Bibles. How many brought your Bibles tonight? You can hold up your smartphone. That works too. Okay, turn with me to Luke chapter 23 and verse 43. Luke 23, 43. When you find that, rise with me in respect to God's holy word. Title of the sermon is Good Friday. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. Let's pray together. We're so thankful, Father, that the finished work of the cross and the empty tomb opened up heaven for anybody that will turn from sin and turn to Christ. We thank you for that everlasting love that was demonstrated on the cross. And Lord, may we lift up that love as we go out today. Fill us with your love that we can pour it out on this community. For together we pray in that name that is above every name, the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So then, Good Friday. Good Friday. In one sense of the word, it's the darkest day of all history. Jesus, the Son of God, was murdered on a Roman cross. But in another sense of that word, it is a central peace to God's plan of salvation. Without Jesus dying on the cross, none of us could go to heaven. He was the sacrificial lamb as well as the scapegoat, all at the same time. So today we'll have four simple points with me. First of all, the first point is suffering. Let's look at the suffering of the cross. Usually we kind of key in on the physical suffering. We notice things like that because we've all suffered. If you've had a toothache or a boil or a broken bone, you know what pain is. But here we have somebody who didn't deserve any pain, that had not earned any pain whatsoever because he was a sinless, spotless son of God. 
He went to the cross of Calvary. The Bible says willingly. Nobody took his life. He laid down his life freely for you and I. But he suffered in so many ways. First of all, physically. You see, they had a mock-up trial, kangaroo court sort of a trial, where even the witnesses couldn't agree on what they were saying. But yet it still, you see, he was smacked in the face. He was punched in the face. Beard plucked, spat upon, mocked and so forth. And that's before he was scourged. The Bible says they took him and they scourged him. They knew what they were doing. There would be two lictors that would start down at the the calves of the legs and work their way up to the nape of the neck, and they would literally fillet somebody's back wide open. Sometimes they'd even wrap around. Of course, the cat of nine tails, uh, nine tails, uh, leather straps, uh, all fastened together, little uh, pointy jagged pieces of rock or stone or metal, very sharp. And they knew how to take that and pull the flesh off the back of an individual. Very gruesome, if you think about the way that he suffered. Then after that, of course, they laid the cross upon his back. He fell beneath the weight of the cross. Somebody else was compelled to carry his cross. He gets to the top of Mount Calvary, and guess what? They nail him to that cross. I believe he willingly spread his arms in the right spot. We're told by history that uh, those that were nailing people to the cross, they would look for a certain nerve, that uh, medium nerve, I believe it is, median nerve, and they would seek out that nerve to inflict the most pain possible. Of course, he was being nailed to the cross, and he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They know not what they do. So there's the suffering, the physical suffering that he went through. The physical suffering. And then after that, there's the emotional suffering. Imagine the week that he'd just been through. We covered this past Sunday. What a glorious Sunday. God certainly blessed that Sunday, I'll tell you. Uh, uh, going in on Palm Sunday. The crowd, you see, were, they were so excited seeing all the great miracles. Crying out, Hosanna in the highest. He even took articles of clothing and palm branches and put down... Uh, before where he was riding on that colt. And he, walk, uh, he rides in. Of course, they were crying out, Oh, Hosanna in the highest. But that fickle crowd, after less than a week, after he cleans out the temple, after he preaches some very deep discipleship sort of sermons, they begin crying out, Crucify, crucify, in a week's time. That's how fickle a crowd can be. Imagine the huge crowds that came to Jesus before. Those great and mighty miracles, they were miracle mongers, no doubt. In John 6, 66, Jesus asked the question, will you also go away? Study that carefully this week, it'll bless you. Peter spoke up and said, where else are we going to go? You have the words of life. But he saw the huge crowds around him, then all of a sudden they're gone. They're gone. Even the disciples had fled at this point, except for John, the beloved at the foot of the cross, sold out by one of his own twelve. Emotional suffering that Jesus went through. His own family didn't even understand him. You may be going through some of that in your life. People look at you like maybe you don't have all your marbles sometimes. Some of the things you do, don't worry about it. If you're serving the living king, don't worry about it, because he's the one you're trying to impress Notice also the spiritual suffering that Jesus went through. We overlooked that many times because from eternity past, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit had complete and pure and total harmony. I mean, beautiful thing. Jesus spoke about it in the great high priestly prayer in John 17, the glory that he had with the Father before, and he's praying that it would be restored. It has been. But uh, he was separated from the Father. Imagine Jesus crying out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Imagine the anguish that went through his body. It, 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 no, it, no doubt a lot of uh, spiritual suffering that he was going through, more than you and I could ever begin to understand. Yes, Jesus went through the suffering of the cross then, Pastor, why in the world is it Good Friday if if that's the case? Well, verse 43 kind of sums it up. Anybody today that will turn from sin and turn to Jesus, the cross is a good thing for you because it paid your way and my way into heaven. 
We see the suffering of the cross, also the satisfaction of the cross. Isaiah 53 tells the story very clearly. God saw the travail of his soul, and he was satisfied, the Bible says. You see, all of us have sinned and gone astray. We've all fallen short of God's glory. We've all gone our own way, the Bible says. But you know what? There's good news for the sinner. Christ died for our sins. That's how much he loves us tonight. He died for us. God saw the travail of his soul. He was satisfied. You see, our God is a holy God. Even though that God is love. He is love. You use that word to describe God because he is love. The chief attribute of God is this. Holiness. Holiness. He is set apart. He is above all, the Bible says, and in all. In him is no darkness at all. No sin. In heaven, he's surrounded by perfection. Huge crowds, throngs of uh, angels in heaven cry out, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. The holiness of God. How in the world can a holy God be reconciled with sinners like you and I? How can it happen? There had to be a mediator. Somebody that would step in. Somebody that was worth more than a bazillion worlds that we live in today. Somebody stepped in and said, I'll pay the price. I will be the mediator today. God saw the travail of his soul, and sin had been paid for, and he was satisfied. Wonderful things happened when Jesus died on the cross. Some of them pretty frightful, if you think about it. Jesus dies on the cross. Guess what happens? The earth refuses to give its light. Imagine that. The sun refuses to give its light to this earth. The sun refuses to shine. The earth begins to quake and the the rocks are breaking wide open. People have been dead for years walking down the streets of Jerusalem, dear friends, because such a great happening has taken place. And the veil in the temple is torn from top to bottom. The veil that separated the holy place from the holy of holies. In other words, separated men from the presence of God. Something so terrific happened that it tore the veil from top to bottom like God took his mighty hands and just ripped it like you would a phone book. You've seen strong men do that on TV probably. And and God did that. Why? Because God is saying uh, through the tearing of the veil, confirmation. What Jesus did is satisfactory. God saw the travail of his soul. He was satisfied. Even a greater confirmation comes on the third day when King Jesus comes forth out of the grave. We know that Jesus paid the sin debt. It was accepted in heaven because he came forth on the third day. Hallelujah tonight. He came forth on the third day. God placed all the sin of the world, past, present, and future, on his own son. And there on the cross, Jesus accepted and took the wrath of his father. He willingly laid his life down for you and for me. The Lamb of God, the sacrificial lamb, and the scapegoat. Once a year, the high priest would symbolically lay his hands on a goat. And they would drive that goat outside the gate because he wasn't allowed to be in the city. Jesus died outside the gate because he is both the sacrificial lamb and the scapegoat. Dear friends, he took our sin far away. Glory to God. God saw what had happened. And he is satisfied with the the great uh, price that was paid by the Lord Jesus Christ. Then third of all, again look at verse 43, the key verse. And he, being Jesus, said to him, Truly I say to you today, you shall be with me in paradise. The salvation of the cross. And you know what? We look at this thief, and uh, he's he's a convict, by the way. He's a con. He's a convict, convicted of being a thief. No doubt he did worse things than that. We don't know everything that he did, but it it bought him a cross. So he was in some bad trouble, and he was going to suffer for it. Uh, My dad would call him a rascal. Dad would have called him, well, that rascal, you may look at him and say, how in the world did that rascal ever get into heaven? The same way anybody else gets into heaven, by the grace of Almighty God. He is the poster child tonight, For salvation by grace through faith. He couldn't even put his hands together to pray. He couldn't bow his knee to pray before Almighty God. He could not do any good works. Was not water baptized. Did not join the First Baptist Church of Jerusalem. He wasn't able to do any good deeds. But you know what? Jesus said today, you'll be with me in paradise. 
He's the poster child on how to get to heaven. Very simple, very simple prayer here. Look at this. Look what he says in verse 42. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Isn't that a simple prayer? Why do we try to make salvation so complicated? Simple prayer. It's coming from his heart or else it wouldn't have been a thing. Just remember me. Notice the penitence in his life. Verse 41, and we indeed are suffering justly for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Now you know what? He's repenting of his sins. What does it mean to repent? More than just being sorry you got caught. It is being sorry enough to turn from sin and turn to Christ. Now the Bible says in Matthew 27, 44, that both of the, these men started out that way. Uh, they, they were saying bad things and hurling uh, uh, insults toward Jesus. But the one out of the two, this guy, I don't know what it was. No doubt the Spirit of God dealing with his heart. But maybe it's the things that he heard Jesus say. You see, these men are tough men. These soldiers that are around the cross, they're tough men. And they'd no doubt, since it's their job to see people die on the cross, uh, no doubt they'd heard a lot of curse words. Perhaps fighting to get away. Blaming other people for their issues. Here's Jesus. He's, he's silent like a lamb that's led to the slaughter. This man is taking all that in. Taking all of it in. And today, on this Good Friday, you need to stop and think about some things in your life. If you're not a Christian, you especially need to listen to this. Imagine the things that were happening. The sun refusing to give its light. Earthquakes, rocks breaking. I mean, dead people, somebody dead for years walking down the streets of Jerusalem. That's a major happening. Imagine walking down the streets of Jerusalem and you're looking through the... Well, that looks like Uncle Herb. That, that is Uncle Herb. My, what a smile on his face. He wasn't smiling that big on his last birthday. He died years ago. He's walking down the street. Buddy, that would make you stop and think, wouldn't it? People, we need to stop and think about where we're going to spend eternity. We get busy with all this stuff that don't really amount to that much. Stop and think and let it set in. This guy was thinking. Here's Jesus in between the two of them. The other guy, he never changed. Everybody has opportunity. The other guy never changed one. But this guy... It sunk in. He was thinking a little bit about things. Well, he's like nobody I've ever been around. Praying for sinners while in such woe, the old hymn tells us. Wow, look at, look, he's different. No doubt he was taken in the earthquake and the darkness at the brightest time of the day. But you know what? He knew there was something special about this man. I happen to believe that Jesus had a face that just, love just came out of it. I just have to believe that. You could just feel the love when you got around this man. And he said to him, Today I say to you, you shall be with me in paradise. Yes. Very simple prayer. Came from his heart. And notice here, no such thing as soul sleep. Soul sleep. You won't find it anywhere in the Bible. You won't find it. This certainly shoots that down. He didn't say in 10,000 years after the rapture, after the millennium, none of that. He says today. Now Jesus got there before him. How do you know that preacher? Because he came by to break the legs to speed up the death because of the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. They couldn't bear them hanging on a cross uh, uh, on Sabbath day. Break their legs to speed it up. They did break his legs and the other thieves. But you know what? They didn't have to break Jesus' legs. He'd already died. They took a spear, thrust it into his side, into the pericardium sack. And they knew that Jesus was dead. These men did it for a living. Jesus had died. And there he was in paradise. His body on the cross, but his soul in paradise, waiting for this man. Imagine uh, expiring and going and being with the Lord Jesus. No soul sleep. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 12, 7, at death, the body goes back to the dust it came from. And the spirit goes to be with the Lord. Ask Deacon Stephen about that who saw the heavens open. So you see, today you shall be with me in paradise. Well, what about paradise? Paradise is a great way for uh, the Jewish people to, to name heaven. 
Anywhere Jesus is in heaven is heaven. Amen. Can they get an amen? Anywhere Jesus is is heaven. Glory to God. He said, you'll be with me in paradise. So we see the salvation today that the cross brings. I would ask you today, are you saved? Are you certain you'd go to heaven if you were to die right now? This Friday can be a good Friday for you too. It's a good Friday for this man. And it can be a good Friday for you too. Last of all, we're going to see the supper. The supper. We see the salvation and now the supper. I'm going to read to you out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's look together at verse 28. I'll give you a moment to get there. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 28. The Bible says, But a man must examine himself, and in so doing he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. As we get ready to participate in the Lord's Supper tonight, we have a time of examination. It's not a time to examine your neighbor or your spouse, the one sitting next to you, front or behind of you in the pew. It's a time to look deep inside your own heart by the Holy Spirit of God. It says, examine yourself. And notice he says, Uh, doing so he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. If you're a born-again believer, it's God's will for you to participate in this. It's for for you to be a part of this, but make sure that you've examined your heart. And as we prepare to do that, I would ask you to bow your head and close your eyes and just open your heart up before the Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, it is so good to be in your house tonight on Good Friday. It is good because of the one who died on the cross. It is good to all of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we partake of this supper, let us first examine our hearts. Lord, we know we can't hide anything from you. I don't know why we'd even try. You know our hearts. You know us better than we know. And perhaps there's some things in our life that should not be. There are sins of commission. We have disobeyed you, Lord, and, and I pray, God, you would just show it to us now, reveal it to our hearts that we could ask for forgiveness. There may be sins of omission, things we ought to be doing, but we're not doing it. It's just disobedience. And help us, Lord, to also seek forgiveness for that. And, Lord, I pray that we would partake of the Lord's Supper with clean hearts and clean hands. We pray for this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I trust you can all find a packet. I think Miss Karen helped you, and we appreciate that. So go ahead, if you will, and remove the wafer. In verse 24 of the same chapter, Jesus said this, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Brother Neil, would you ask the blessing upon the body of the Lord? The Lord Jesus said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
And in the same way, he took the cup also after supper. Brother Bob Sr., would you lead us in the blessing on the fruit of the vine? Amen. The Lord Jesus said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good Friday, Lord's Supper. But you know we can't leave Jesus on the cross or in the borrowed tomb, can we? The Bible says, if you read on in verse 27... Now, verse 26, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. He's no longer on the cross. He's no longer in the tomb. Over 4,000 religions in the world. How do you know Jesus is the way? There's an empty tomb outside Jerusalem that lets us know without any shadow of any doubt Jesus is the way. Yes, He's coming back. Nobody can stop him. Nobody can slow him down. Nobody can speed him up. He's coming back with great honor and power and glory. He's coming back with clouds, the Bible says. He's coming back with regal, regal majesty because he is who he says he is. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Yes, he's coming back. We proclaim the Lord's death every time we do this until he comes. Are you ready for that day? If you're not ready for that day, dear friends, I want you to know you can be ready before you leave. We're going to have an invitation now. I would ask you to once again examine your heart. Perhaps you could not partake of the Lord's Supper because you know you're not right with God. Whatever it may be, the invitation then is for you. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Have you allowed the blood of the Lamb to be applied to your life? If not, right now it's the time of the service to come and do that. How did the thief do it? How did the thief do it? He asked him, Lord, remember me. Remember me when your kingdom comes. A simple prayer like that from your heart. That's all it takes. It's all rise together. Number Miss Karen. In 134. 134. If you have a decision, you want to be a member of the church, you want to be baptized, you want to be saved, right now is the time to come. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of and pray find in me thine all in all Jesus paid it all, all he's not in that tomb anymore he's at the right hand of the father praying for you and praying for me how did you get through this past year you didn't do it he did it he picked you up and carried you through that hardship Give him glory from your heart tonight. He's a great God. He is. He loves you tonight. If you're not certain about your salvation, please come. Give your heart to the Lord. Won't you come?
One more verse, won't you come? The cross is the centerpiece of God's plan of salvation. He has a plan for your life too. An individual, personalized plan just for you. Come tonight, get in on that plan. It's better than anything you could ever dream of. Come and get in on that. thank the music team for doing such a great job amen praise god all that beautiful music really blessed me tonight anything on your hearts before we close any prayer needs met a lady on the trail today her name's becky as she uh, got diagnosed with ms and she i prayed with her she was pretty down about it pray for her and her husband if you will anybody else Okay, then, if all hearts are clear, Brother Steve, we appreciate you up there. You're the unsung hero sometimes. We don't get your name called, Brett, but we appreciate you. Close us in prayer, would you? Amen.